come outdoors today to one of my favorite places to get exercise. I can hear dogs barking in the distance. I can hear distant traffic. I can hear birdsong. It's all very real. If you appreciate music and are of a certain age, then I'm sure you'll be able to remember when we could regularly head down to the record store for either the latest chart release, or we may have saved up enough money to buy the latest album. We would spend hours admiring the artwork on the sleeve, carefully take out the perfect and pristine looking vinyl. We used a velvet pad to carefully ensure it was as clean as possible before placing it onto our turntable and proceed to place the needle, sorry, stylus on the turning disc. We'd slowly turn up the volume and enjoy the sensation of hearing the slight static before our music filled the room. If we bought a single, we could, on some players, stack them on the centre spindle and have them play one by one. Can anyone remember that? Some of us invested in what we called our hi-fi player and had separate speakers. Some of these speakers were the size of our refrigerators and created a sound so real and with a stack of separate tuners amplifiers and cassette players could move the house with our newfound power of modern electronic music making devices. In the middle of the 1980s though, things started to change and this new digital technology, the CD, started its journey through the industry. It changed everything. Our static had disappeared and by pressing the button, the now invisible stylus move to the next track, or a different track altogether with armchair ease. A whole new way of listening to music had arrived. For the rest of the 80s and the 90s, our CD collections grew and grew, and our vinyl collections started to attract dust in the back of our wardrobes and in boxes in the loft. We started to display our CD collections like books in libraries areas of our living rooms were given over to flat pack self build towers of music. We still had cover artwork to admire and booklets of background information to our albums that we could read while listening to our favourite tunes. If we started to disturb our fellow house dwellers, we would purchase huge padded speakers to place on our heads and further appreciate the real sound of our music. It was like being there at the concert, the theatre, or the venue of our favoured band. Music was lifelike, it sounded natural, it was real, and we felt we were there in the moment. Then, on the 9th of January 2001, Apple launched a new phenomenon, iTunes. Tunes that we could play on our computers, the computers that we purchased throughout the 90s to write emails, send messages and talk to people across the globe with a few touches on the keyboard. This new way of consuming our music meant we weren't able to buy something tangible from the store. We lost the ability of having artwork to admire and our beloved booklets to read. Just eight months later, this same corporate giant decided that the way we were to listen to music was to change. And on the 23rd of October 2001, they launched the iPod. Guess what? We now didn't play recordings, we played mp3s. It was as far back as 1979 when the Sony Walkman enabled us to listen to music in a way as to shut out the rest of the world. But the iPod was something different. Our way of listening to music had changed forever. Our hi-fi speaker systems that had for decades improved so much that we lived the music in our living rooms was reduced to something a thousandth of the size we placed in our ear. No longer could we share our music experience with our friends and families. Music became a personal thing. Don't get me wrong, technology in music reproduction was a huge advance in human technological ability, but were we meant to think that this was to replace this? There's no comparison to these. This sounds shit. Did I just say shit? 
Now there are those that would say we are now in a much better position because we now have both systems, we have a choice. But why go to the trouble to make mobile phone speakers create 3D sound experiences? Does anyone appreciate that? Or do we just appreciate the fact that humans can create such a sound sensation? Back in the late 80s, I orchestrated my first musical, all written out by hand, and had to wait until I had assembled real musicians, real players that could produce the sound that I had only until then heard in my head. Today we have the ability to create our music on computers with extraordinary realism. I can notate my musical thoughts with ease, and what was once the domain of the music engraver is now available to us all. I can make changes, make it as perfect as possible, and print out professionally looking parts for real musicians to recreate my acoustic vision. Sampled instruments have taken over the realm of creating music in our home studios. In my humble opinion, virtual instruments are without doubt the most revolutionary change there has been in modern times in the world of music creation. Orchestral music particularly can now be produced in our home studios with ease. In addition to notation technology, we now have the ability to record our real instruments at home our voices and digitally enhance, correct and turn the sound of what we once heard in our living rooms decades ago. That sense of realism is today produced through our digital audio workstations or our doors. Of course there will be the purists that feel we can only produce a string section by using real string players, but Real string players are used in the creation of the virtual instruments we use in our music making anyway. But the vast, vast majority of humans that consume music don't care how it's produced, or that that oboe solo in our orchestrations is not a real player. It is sometimes said that choosing which door you use is similar to the decision you made as to whether you went down the PC route or the Mac route. When I started this music technology journey, I was advised by a retailer to go down the Cubase route. Now, I'm sure all doors do more or less the same thing, and the more you pay for your version of your door, the more it can do. The more instruments you get for your buck, and generally the ability to create endless tracks to add to your realism. But why do we get endless supplies of synth patches, hundreds if not thousands of kick drums, snares and every synthetic type of drum hits you could ever need? And don't get me going on loops. There are thousands of these things littering up my hard drives that I will never use. Yes, of course it is of use for those wanting to learn and wanting to create a beat. Oh, that phrase, creating a beat. You certainly won't learn music using loops. You'll learn how to string together a pattern of drums that you can then make sound even more sterile. But it won't turn you into a musician. Doors have the ability to quantize or correct the information we even put into our recording packages to make recording sound more like it's played by a computer. Those working with MIDI back in the 80s were accused of creating music that sounded too robotic. Today, sterile, highly quantized tracks are a genre in itself. Thankfully, we also have the technology to reverse and loosen that tightly quantized recording. Again, to make our music sound more real. Yep, that phrase again. If door manufacturers are wanting to help their customers create music, please stop encouraging the notion that music can only be about creating drum patterns and repeated so-called musical phrases. On one hand, you're helping make music real, then on the other hand, you're supplying thousands of useless files to steer our music making into just placing a series of small recordings made by someone else, incidentally, end to end. That isn't making music. 
included in our doors are a huge array of additional sound enhancing equipment and I use this word very loosely they are so-called plugins they can ensure that we can produce sounds without those huge machines used in the studios in previous decades they can also make our music sound robotic again and don't get me going on auto-tune type technology if you can't sing in tune you can't sing all these plugins in some way help refine our sound and make it sound like we were back in our room with our hi-fi systems. Guess what? We even have software to add the static. We all have our music preferences. There are classically trained musicians in studios trying and succeeding in creating beautiful orchestral creations and doing a fantastic job. There are musicians creating popular music and producing punchy head popping beats to keep us bopping around the nightclubs. Whichever music you're into, we need to keep it real. We need to make it sound like it's produced by humans. Computer technology and music technology as a whole has come a long way over the past decade. But let's do what we can to ensure musicians have the technology to create lifelike natural sounding music we all enjoy and let's not encourage those still to learn the joys of music creation that all there is to learn is how to produce sterile pulses of sound <laughs>